Coach, uh, just in terms of, of coming to Boston College, um, mm -hmm. getting in with the staff, getting in with, with their coaches who may have worked with, may not have worked with, may have crossed paths with just right. over the, the course of, of your career. Um, what is it about the staff that drew you? How has your adjustment been to working in with them, with their different styles and their different personalities? Just how's it been for you to, to adjust into a new staff? Um, I mean, in, in this in this profession, when you've been at different places uh, throughout the course of your career, you're going to have to adapt and adjust to different culture styles, different personalities. I think this staff is very special in the way Coach Hadley put it together. There's guys that I worked with in the past. Um, at a, I actually coached with Coach Halfley at, uh, at the 49ers, Coach Tim at the 49ers. I was with Coach Matt Turin at, at Ohio State. So there's a lot of cross across uh, guys that worked together in the past, and it's a, it's, a, it's a natural mesh. It's a natural mesh. And the guys that I have not met before, I think we have the same type of vibe and energy and the same type of um, uh, vision with Coach Halfley that makes it a, a very, very smooth transition for me. And just from a straight positional standpoint, uh -huh. um, the concepts that you know from the NFL, the concepts that you know from, from out west with, with UCLA, what you remember from when you played. Even, right. Um, how does all that come together for you with what you maybe already seen or what you already knew about Boston College and what you're trying to do uh, within, the, within the defense? Well, there, there's going to be some carryover from what we did in the past when I was with the 49ers because of the style of play and what we want to do up front. Uh, we'll be primarily a four down a four down front. We'll be very, very similar to what we do when we're trying to attack and dent the line of scrimmage and create separation up front for those backers to get, get uh, run down, the, run down the, the, their, their gaps and uh, create some havoc. So schematically, uh, it'll be very what I'm used to in the past. Not so much at uh, UCLA last year, but in the 49ers uh, at Ohio State when I was coaching there and at Duke when I was coaching there, there'll be some, some crossover. Mm -hmm. Coach, you, uh, you mentioned you know, the, the different stops you've had. Yes, sir. Um, the, there's a new energy around this program. Yep. Uh, aside from the players, does that kind of permeate throughout the coach's room as well and, and kind of get all you guys fired up and, and wanting to do more? Um. I'm I'm naturally a, a, a very jovial, energetic guy. I think whenever anybody's excited or has energy in a in a on a team, in a staff, or in an organization, it will permeate naturally. Um, and I think that's very very critical, especially for us being a younger staff and having uh, a, a young a young ball team. That they make sure we we have energy every day we come into the building. Nobody wants to be around dullards or guys that don't have any any juice or energy. So it starts with the staff, and it will permeate through the whole the players and the, the team. Got a ton of ACC experience going back to it, like ten years now, or whatever. What, what, how has how is it different, and how is it the same as you remember? Obviously, besides the number of teams. Um. Well, the ACC has always been highly competitive. Uh, when I was back playing, I was on the coastal side. When I played at Duke. Um, now being on the other side of it, we won't, won't see Duke <laughs> until you know until we see them. But I think it's been a, a highly competitive conference. It produces really great players. Um, I'm just excited to get back get back to it. I think the biggest difference from when I was playing is just the number of teams that are in it now. So that'd be the biggest. It's always highly competitive. Yeah, same time, I mean, you mentioned the, just the energy between the different staffs, but it's also just like a highly it's like a high football IQ staff. Like they have NFL experience. Absolutely. Yeah, you, know, you, got, you go you know Jeff going back to the 49ers. Yes, sir. Guys at Alabama, guys at Ohio State. Yep. Guys, they had their own side programs, cover one, whatever it is. Right. What, when you put all that in one room, um, what are the benefits of having so many guys in the football? Well, when you have different guys from different backgrounds, different levels, I think it allows for everybody to to put input their ideas, their thoughts, and their opinions in a very, very objective fashion. Whether whether we like it or not, there's everybody having some some. Um, some, something to bring to the table. Sometimes you get into a stat that somebody has not had that experience, they can't speak up on an idea, a thought, or a concept. So I think it's very, very good that we do have that, that way we can you know, bring something that we did in the past and may, that may mesh well what we're doing now, or somebody might have brought something what they've done in the past that may mesh well what we're doing now. So it's just having a collective, a collaborative efforts when we're putting down stuff on paper for defense. What were the encounter like for you and Jeff were in San Francisco? Because I'm sure there was a lot of like, Interaction, learning. It was probably a unique experience for both of you guys. Well, Jeff, Jeff had been um, been in NFL prior to I, prior to me. My, my first year in the NFL was in uh, 2016 with with the Niners. So for me, it was me just being able to soak up so much football knowledge over the course of my two years there. And my uh, my office was one one office away from uh, Coach Halfley's, and always bouncing ideas off him, learning some of the back end stuff from him as well as Coach Tim. 
um, and then just learning how how to scheme up different teams as you go through the the year and see how guys scheme us up as well because it's purely football at that level. So you can really indoctrinate yourself into a system and, and tape and film and really get to be uh, invested in your players at at a, at, a, at such a high level, which is which is pretty cool at it, like any organization. Mm -hmm. Coach, what do you look for in in the development of an edge rusher? What do you look for? Um, typically, when I'm when I'm looking for uh, rushers on the end, I like to see some guys that have natural ability to, to flip their hips, uh, use their hands, and have very very fast feet. Uh, I think when you see that at the young at a young age, especially coming out of high school. Those are tools that we can use to develop those guys into really elite edge rushers. Sometimes it's the first step. Sometimes it's when you get to the contact point, can they use their hands and can they can they flip their hips? That's typically what I look at look at in the edge rusher when I'm evaluating tape by school guys. And seeing a lot of these kind of hybrid edge rushers now, and especially in the ACC when you have such athletic quarterbacks, right? Is that the kind of guy you kind of need at the edge a little bit? Well, I, I think I think. Uh, any any good defense is going to have to have somebody that can rush the passer and turn and turn the hoop. Uh, especially what, what what we're doing, we got to be able to rush the passer in our style of defense. So not only on the edge, but also only in the interior, we got to have guys that can get after the quarterback and win one on one pass rush against tackles, guards, and centers if they have the opportunity to do that. Do you like to uh, use a lot of bodies, play situational football with a lot of different players, or do you just look for a core four and then? Uh, I mean, rotating into down and distance stuff like that. Uh, so, so first of all, I like to learn what my guys are able to do from a from a, just an overall stand uh, overall ability standpoint, yeah. which we're learning about now as we go through these these uh these first couple of one on one sessions, individual sessions leading up to uh, spring football on Saturday, and then once I learn their skill sets and what they can do, I try to maximize it by putting them in the best position to. Be, be productive. So I'm not a cookie cutter type of coach. I like to see what, what a guy is good at and how I can maximize him and how I can build up his, his skills that he may not be as good at. So yes, I will put guys in different places to maximize their, their skills.